so <clears throat> a very good evening boys and girls so uh let's proceed today with uh, another mcq series so i hope all of you are doing well with best of your health with best of your immunity so i'm your mentor at an academy dr reena kaur and let's get started with uh, this session on certain practice mcqs neat pg so before that uh, let me tell you that the yes so let me tell you that the exam all india mock test is being now shifted to 26th right it is been now shifted to 26th so if uh, you were thinking that you are not yet prepared so let me tell you now you can again continue with your preparations because you can enroll yourself it is 26th so moving on to the first question for the day which of the following is the most common sign of cushing syndrome see i am now asking you the commonest sign of cushing syndrome right so be very very important that uh, you should know you know oh kirti <laughs> thank you so much uh, kirti sasrikal to you too okay so i am now asking you which is the most common symptoms remember that when i ask you the common symptom among amenorrhea hirsutism obesity or the purple skin stripe so the next yes so the correct answer is going to be c that is obesity right so when you speak of the commonest sign it is obesity hello tima hope you are doing well beta now what is cushing syndrome basically you should know that cushing syndrome is hypercortisolism that means there is excess of cortisol this excess of cortisol usually comes from the adrenotropic hormone that is an acth secreting adrenal adenoma it could be either an adrenal adenoma it could be either ectopic uh, acth production or it could be even iatrogenic ingestion for example if the patient is suffering from some chronic diseases and uh, he's been given uh, over a long period of time cortisol this iatrogenic hypercortisolism is commonest cause of the cushionoid features right whereas the acth secreting tumors account for about 10 to 15% you should know that the ectopic acth tumors they can include small cell lung carcinoma thymoma and the most common symptom the patient is going to come with is will be obesity in 80% cases and rest you know hirsutism the purple skin stri they are also going to be present apart from this hyperglycemia because you know it is causing decrease in the utilization of uh, glucose decrease in the peripheral utilization of glucose behaving as anti insulin with its uh, detrimental effects over the bone and over the calcium absorption and with also over the uh, muscle catabolism it is resulting in the osteoporosis proximal muscle weakness acne hirsutism leukocytosis remember it causes increase in three important cells those three important cells which it causes increase is uh it causes increase in neutrophils and in platelets and in rbc whereas it decreases bell what is bell basophils eosinophils and lymphocytes so the patients are usually succumb to infections in this case right next question now you might be knowing this isn't it yes you might be knowing this you might have seen this experiment any time nahi to just first look over to the question what does the question say the question says that the following experiment is done in dogs to study which phase of gastric secretion so let's look into the dog what is being done over here the dog is given food right but you can see that an esophageal fistula is created so that whatever food the dog is eating is not going into the stomach and there is gastric 
collection of the gastric juice so what phase are we studying esophageal gastric intestinal or cephalic very good tushar tushar has given the correct answer tima uh, there is no phase as esophageal there are three important phases cephalic gastric intestinal right so the correct answer is d that is cephalic this experiment is called as sham feeding okay it is called as sham feeding you can see the dog which is given the food but the food is not allowed to enter the stomach because we are creating an esophageal fistula so this indicates that even the taste smell or the sight of good food or even the taste of good food is going to bring about the gastric secretion not only the salivary secretion and again remember that the cephalic phases are mainly neural okay their regulation is mainly neural so moving on next you've been given certain values before isoproteinol and after the drug with certain reference range you've been given the values for forced vital capacity fev1 frc and tlc so look into the values now with this values in your mind with the values in the picture calculate them and let me know that this could be which of the following is most likely for this patient okay the case history is not given this is a actually this is a case of a restrictive lung disease right the case given is of the restrictive lung disease so what would condition would be a restrictive lung disease over here asbestosis chronic bronchitis idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis interstitial lung disease or pulmonary embolism see the patient was i just missed out that this patient had come in history of uh, an obstructive kind of disease right b chronic bronchitis so when you take chronic bronchitis you are more towards an obstructive lung disease right that means a low fev1 to fvc ratio what is the problem in obstructive lung disease that there is increased resistance to airways during obstruction right so this is very very important whereas the other conditions like asbestosis fibrosis interstitial lung disease they mainly will take us towards uh the restrictive pattern where the fev1 to fvc ratio will be normal or it will be increased but it is only the bronchitis which is an obstructive kind of pattern where you're going to get an obstructive or the increased ratio next a 17 year old boy presents to the emergency department with cerebellar hemorrhage on examination he exhibits jerky eye movements he is swaying when standing he has got a drunken gait which region of the cerebellum is likely to be affected by hemorrhage so as to produce such symptoms anterior lobe dentate nucleus floculonodular interpositus or posterior lobe yes so amitabh tushar and sairam very good guys you get the correct answer that is the floculonodular lobe remember when we speak of uh, <clears throat> the cerebellum you have got a functional classification of cerebellum the spino cerebellum the neo cerebellum that is the lateral cerebellum and the floculonodular lobe that is the vestibulo cerebellum right the vestibulo cerebellum now out of this okay out of this the vestibulo cerebellum which is the floculonodular lobe this portion being connected to the vestibular apparatus plays an important role in the posture and equilibrium vestibular apparatus itself is receiving inputs and it is giving inputs to the vestibular nucleus vestibular nucleus you know it is controlling the movements of the head neck eyes so they are all interconnected and if you look into the anterior lobe the anterior lobe is basically responsible for the unconscious proprioception dentate nucleus is responsible for the planning programming initiation of the voluntary movements so it is basically the deficits of the floculonodular lobe that is going to result in a loss of maintenance and equilibrium 
next now a 38 year old mother of three mother of three having three children complains of sleepiness sleeplessness for six months history physical examination are unremarkable and she agrees for an overnight sleep study that means polysomnography which we call during polysomnography sawtooth waves are seen the question though it is a clinical based question again the last line is typically typically a physiology it is asking you <coughs> the sawtooth waves which are seen on the EEG are associated with which period of sleep REM stage 1, 2 or 3 so what is the correct answer boys and girls Sairam it is not stage 2 no it is REM sleep which is typically associated with saw tooth waves can you see these are the typical saw tooth waves which are associated with REM sleep whereas the NREM sleep especially the stage 2 is characterized by the K complexes also known as the sleep spindles got it so REM sleep now this itself is a very important image based question which can come to you now you know that the waves are classified depending upon their frequency and their amplitude so the largest amplitude and the least frequency delta right the largest amplitude the least frequency is delta delta is characteristic of deep sleep so d for delta and d for deep sleep alpha when the mind is totally relaxed eyes are closed this is important eyes are closed and there is decrease in the level of attention although you may get wandering thoughts but the attention is decreased and the patient is about to sleep as soon as the person falls asleep alpha waves will disappear and there will be appearance of theta waves so theta waves means the person has slept however while sleeping suppose if you wake up if you wake up by some sensory stimuli you wake up because of suppose light was in a, a achanak light chali gay, yeah, there is a lot of light entering into your eye or you remember something which was really important you missed out something your mind got disturbed your mind got active so you get beta waves so mind active is beta waves so remember that beta waves can also be seen with REM sleep because REM sleep is a kind of a paradoxical sleep where the brain is active which is reflected by the presence of beta waves okay so deep sleep delta alpha eyes closed mind is wandering with thoughts but decreased level of attention mind is active beta patient has fallen to sleep theta now you get an adducted and a flexed posture of arms in decorticate rigidity it is because of which of the following tract tectospinal influence rubrospinal influence pontine reticular spinal or medullary reticular spinal yes Tushar Amitabh Sai Ramul give the correct answer beta. Kabir is there Zainab Tima yes Kriti, who would like to give the correct answer? So the correct answer is the rubrospinal tract. Let's see. See, full extension, extension of the upper limbs, extension of the lower limbs. Full extension. This is decerebrate rigidity. You can see a characteristic feature of decerebrate rigidity being produced in experimental animals. That is in cats where you get a hyper extended spine called as opisthotonus, a hyper extended spine. So, decerebrate rigidity, may, what do we do? That we do a mid-collicular transection. With a mid-collicular transection, 
all the supraspinal influences to the spinal cord are lost the only tract which is remaining patent is the pontine reticulospinal tract which is a facilitatory tract it causes excessive facilitation of the gamma motor neurons resulting in rigidity of the upper limbs and the lower limbs with decorticate rigidity you are going to get extension in the lower limbs that is again because of the pontine that is the facilitatory reticulospinal tract but you are getting a flexion of the upper limb this flexion of the upper limb is because of the rubrospinal tract to be remembered rubrospinal tract is a very small tract extending only up till the cervical uh, cord of the uh, cervical spinal cord another important thing is that the rubrospinal tract is facilitatory to the flexors so because it is facilitatory to the flexors it is causing flexion because it is a small tract it is causing flexion of only the upper limbs another important point if we have to compare between the decerebrate rigidity and the decorticate rigidity remember decerebrate rigidity will have more rigidity than decorticate right because in decorticate the basal ganglia is intact because the basal ganglia is intact it is going to regulate some amount of rigidity so remember this is very very important question decorticate decerebrate and you must know ischemic rigidity which is a kind of alpha rigidity right next now you can see that various diagrams are been given to us a b c d e which of them illustrates pulmonary vasculature when the cardiac output has increased to its maximum getting my arms question which of them helps you or tells you that although there is increase in cardiac output or there is increase in the pulmonary blood flow which could happen in a physiological condition like exercise how is going to be the pulmonary vasculature which of the figure depicts the correct one a b c d e kon bolega d okay so creation is saying d anybody else amitabh is saying d okay okay so the correct answer boys and girls is a very good nep nep up very good a why a now c two important features are there right what are the two important features the pulmonary blood flow increases several fold without increase in the pulmonary artery pressure this is because of recruitment and distension recruitment means opening up of the previous vessels uh, vessels which were previously closed distension means they are enlarging so because of recruitment and distension of the pulmonary blood vessels both of them they maintain high blood flow but keep the pulmonary vascular resistance low therefore we say that the pulmonary vascular resistance is a low resistance it is a low resistance circuit because the blood flow is increasing without the cost of increase in the pressure due to you can see that these are enlarged and opened up so both recruitment and distension yahan pe ab dekho these are still collapsed these are collapsed this is which is actually reflecting distension and recruitment so again a very important neat pg type of a image based question to be remembered right and two important things distension and recruitment now moving on next again a uh, smooth muscle motility is one of very common repeatedly asked being question in the examinations the question says a 24 year old male graduate student participates in some clinical research which is being done on the intestinal motility what is true regarding peristalsis of the small intestine it mixes the food bolus it is coordinated by the cns it involves contraction of the circular smooth muscle behind and in front of the food bolus involves relaxation of the circular smooth muscle behind 
sorry contraction of the circular smooth muscle behind relaxation in front or relaxation of the circular and the longitudinal muscles of the small intestine simultaneously amitabh has given the answer d and sairam c okay so the correct answer is d very good amitabh so i think those who, who give correct answers you know you should be given something yes for all the correct answers let me uh, give you a cup of tea so whoever is now going to give a correct answer will get a cup of tea because it is winters we need to soothe our throat yes but remember it should be the first one to give correct answer bhi hona chahiye aur first wala bachcha bhi hona chahiye so this time the correct bachcha was amitabh so amitabh wants this coffee right now whenever we speak of peristalsis what is peristalsis and what is segmentation segmentation is the mixing movement of the small intestine right segmentation is the mixing movement of the small intestine that means it mixes the food it is not propelling the food so segmentation in the small intestine and hostrations in the large intestine they mix the food when we speak of peristalsis they are propagating the food forward and you know that there are two types of muscles there are circular muscles and there are longitudinal muscles so with peristalsis there is going to be contraction of the circular smooth muscle behind and relaxation in front again remember that it is coordinated by the enteric nervous system and not by cns that the peristalsis cannot occur if there is absence of the enteric nervous system another thing to be remembered that when there is a uh, you know like when there is peristalsis the segment behind the food bolus which is showing contraction is because of serotonin acetylcholine substance p and the relaxation of the segment ahead is because of nitric oxide and vip right so this forms the law of gut what is the law of gut the law of gut says that the food bolus will cause the contraction of the segment behind the food relaxation of the segment ahead the food and this peristalsis ka movement is always going to be towards the anus right next now very interesting question a uh, physiology examiner was taking viva and he asked his student who first invented eeg electroencephalography now the student was not knowing the answer so the examiner was very kind and he gave him a clue and he asked him okay tell me what do you get at mcdonalds so the student immediately gave the right answer burgers rhythm isn't it eeg was invented by burger so as soon as mcdonald was said he remembered burger and he remembered it was burgers ecg now here the student is using which type of memory priming reflex associated or declarative till now i have not got the correct answer it is not c anybody would like to win the cup of tea no no so the correct yeah krishna krishna has got the correct answer so this time i am going to give krishna cup of tea yes this is for krishna very good so it is krishna who gave the first correct answer so krishna ko milta hai coffee right so it is called as priming this priming is done by neocortex right for example for example if i say you app uh, a what comes with a what immediately you think when i say a4 yes what will immediately come into your mind if i say a a4 a4 what does come into your mind क्या आएगा हमने क्या पढ़ा है ए फॉर नर्सरी में यस द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट कम्स इन टू द माइंड विद ए विल बी एप्पल वेरी गुड सायरा इट विल बी एप्पल दैट इज प्राइमिंग राइट यस सी 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 एवरीबडी इज गिविंग ए दैट इज वॉट इज प्राइमिंग 
करेक्ट 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 तुषार वेरी गुड सो तुषार इज सेंडिंग मी वर्चुअल एप्पल्स ऑल्सो थैंक यू दैट इज असोसिएटेड लर्निंग असोसिएटेड लर्निंग इज लर्निंग बिटवीन टू स्टमल आई राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू लुक एट द क्लाउड्स यू नो इट इज गोइंग टू रेन दैट इज असोसिएटिव लर्निंग राइट रिमेंबर सो प्राइमिंग इज डन बाय नियो कॉटेक्स नेक्स्ट which of the following is not required for calculation of creatinine clearance urine creatinine serum creatinine volume of urine in 24 hours or volume of serum in 24 hours a b c d again clearance is a very high yielding topic so noor has given the correct answer yes d is the correct answer i think it was noor who gave the correct answer so i would offer this time the coffee to noor we don't require volume of serum isn't it we requ- we don't require volume of serum we requ- what is clearance it is urinary concentration of a substance divided by plasma concentration of a substance into urine flow rate remember urine flow rate is in ml per minute gfr is in ml per minute or liters per day but plasma concentration urine concentration they are going to be milligrams or grams or millimoles per minute uh, per ml right they are going to be milligram per ml or milli equivalents per ml or millimoles per ml yes tushar very good so tushar Tushar is because repeatedly giving answers. Let's give a cup of tea also to Tushar, right? So remember that units play a very very important role in a life of a medico. See, we are not being tested with our um, maths. Never big big values are going to be given to us. Very simple values will be given, but where we do garbage is either the formula we are not knowing or the units we are not knowing. So remember like that, okay? next one now a single neuron is receiving about 500 inputs from 150 different sensory cells what is this phenomenon feedback inhibition feed forward excitation convergence divergence thank you riduvid very good so riduvid you yourself is going to one a cup of tea Okay so let me give you a chocolate or let me give you a piece of cake very very good yes so the correct answer is convergence can you see this can also come in the form of a image based question so it is convergence when multiple sources are landing up on one single neuron it is convergence can you tell me it can be which type of summation a spatial summation or a temporal summation kaun sa summation ho sakta hai ye spatial ya temporal one presynaptic or one postsynaptic and number of presynaptics ending over it isn't it see so many inputs increase in the surface area that is surface constant or space constant this is called as spatial summation whereas if it is a temporal summation you just keep on increasing the frequency of stimulation that is how a different topic of summation but i'm just telling you over here convergence this type can be also spatial summation just imagine alpha motor neurons of spinal cord receiving inputs from pyramidal tracts extra pyramidal tracts intersegmental reflexes convergence divergence pain pathway pain pathway which is giving collaterals to the it is going to the thalamus from there going to the cortex giving thalam giving collaterals to the reticular activating system to the periaqueductal gray matter so a single pathway is magnified when we are diverging it got it so this is one of the very very important property of synapse that it shows convergence it shows divergence moving on next a 21 year old man had gastroenteritis and he developed vomiting so when there is vomiting means the person is throwing out the stomach contents definitely the stomach contents are going to be acidic so because the acid is thrown out 
comparatively the metabolite uh, the bicarbonates will be more so this patient will definitely develop metabolic alkalosis what are you expecting in this patient most likely the plasma bicarbonate will decrease h plus ions will move from the plasma to the cells peripheral chemoreceptors will stimulate ventilation or renal excretion of h plus ion will decrease whenever you look into the compensations you are very very much confused yes so the correct answer is d the patient has developed metabolic alkalosis so because you have got metabolic alkalosis the cause could be loss of acids which has occurred because there is vomiting and because there is loss of acid the bicarbonate level rises it not decrease now the bicarbonate levels are rising the ph is on the side of alkalosis this is not going to stimulate the peripheral chemoreceptors rather momentarily the peripheral chemoreceptors will be inhibited so that there is decrease in the rate and depth of breathing which will again accumulate co2 and try to bring about h plus and the ph towards normal because there is excessive bicarbonates the the kidney will try to come uh, the uh, the kidney will try to um, compensate by increasing the loss of bicarbonates but decreasing the excretion of h plus ions now this option is confusing h plus ions will move from the plasma into the cells this occurs with acidosis <coughs> whenever there is large amount of h plus ions or when there is acidosis h plus ions will move into the cell to be buffered so when h plus ions move into the cell to be buffered potassium ions they will have to move out from the cells into the plasma because at a time only one positive ion can remain inside so to maintain electrical neutrality the potassium ions will move out and therefore you might have read that with acidosis there can be hyperkalemia so loss of hcl means increase in the plasma bicarbonate metabolic acidosis ph will decrease that means alkaline side which is going to actually suppress the chemoreceptors so that there is building up of co2 and get the ph towards normal again acid base balance is a high yielding topic to be remembered right next a 45 year old woman has got a cerebrovascular accident that causes necrosis of the posterior pituitary which of the following effects is most likely to be seen in ability to lactate hypothyroidism hypoglycemia or hypernatremia who will make a try who wants a who wants a cake who wants a coffee yes who will try nep sairam no inability to lactate that means related with prolactin red prolactin is coming from the acidophils in the anterior pituitary yes ridovig is correct so we'll give a piece of cake and cup to ridovig and the correct answer is d that is hypernatremia very good now why hypernatremia see posterior pituitary means adh isn't it so lack of adh results in inability to reabsorb water so the person is going to pass a large volume of dilute urine because water is not getting reabsorbed because water is not getting reabsorbed there is going to be a compensatory or you can say a relatively increase in the amount of sodium that is hypernatremia so here the hypernatremia is not because of the problem with sodium here the hypernatremia is more sodium is getting reabsorbed as compared to water because water is not reabsorbed due to lack of adh no 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 sairam the physiology uh, needs practice 
Sairam physiology needs practice beta. It is really volatile. And although it is a conceptual subject, you need to revise it. Uh, red bug. It could be beta central. It could be peripheral. We have not mentioned over here. We've just mentioned the disorder related to posterior pituitary. Right? Now, very simple question. Most of the heat loss from the unclothed person at room temperature occurs by which of the following mechanism? Yes. Conduction to air, conduction to objects, convection, evaporation or radiation. Yes, so red bug, siram. This question, I think girls, boys, you can crack it. Which of the following is the most common mechanism of heat loss from the body? Yes, without doubt, it is radiation. Very good. So Abhishek gave the first answer, isn't it? So we'll give a cup of tea to Abhishek. Very good. Now, 60% of the body heat is lost by radiation, right? This is something very, very important. Loss of heat by radiation is actually in the form of infrared rays. All objects radiate heat waves and heat waves are radiated from the wall of the rooms and the other object towards the body and the body is going to radiate them back to the surrounding. This basically depends upon temperature. If the temperature of the body is greater than the temperature of the surrounding, more heat radiates from the body so if the body temperature is more than the surrounding body is going to lead, lose more heat next so just look into this graph where on the x-axis you have got the erythropoietin level on the y-axis you have got hematocrite mm. and you've got different points a b c d e e and f Various points are given. Then heat will be gain. Red bug. See, we have read this here. Look at this. If the temperature of the body is greater, more heat will radiate. But if the temperature of the body is less than the surrounding, then the surrounding ka heat is going to be towards body. Body will gain heat then. Got red bug? Body will gain heat from the surrounding. Read the last sentence. Yes. Now, which of the following, which point in the following graph most closely define the that of the Olympic marathon runner? So, which point A, B, C, D, E, F you think is of the Olympic marathon runner? Right? When there is erythropoietin on the x-axis and hematocrete on the y-axis. Konsa point raiga? Olympic marathon runner ka. No, not F. D is the correct point. Just look into the levels of erythropoietin. 10 is given to be normal. Agar aap F bolte ho, F. F matlab erythropoietin level more than 100. This means that the patient is on treatment. This is not physiological. This is not physiological. Slight increase in the erythropoietin level is there with erythropoiesis being more in a, not only in a marathon, in any athlete. And the hematocrit is between 50. Best point is this. 50 around hematocrit and this is the erythropoietin level. Right? That means slightly more. If you say C, C erythropoietin is 10. And I am saying you that in an athlete, like in a marathon runner, the erythropoietin level is going to be slightly more. Right? But obviously, if you take F, leto, to, it becomes abnormal. This means either the person is on some treatment and therefore there is a massive rise in the erythropoietin. Now, another interesting thing. A plastic anemia. 
in a condition like aplastic anemia in which the bone marrow has got a decreased production but does not respond to erythropoietin therefore a person with aplastic anemia will have low hematocrit elevated erythropoietin for example point e point e is typically of the patient with aplastic anemia having high erythropoietin but very low hematocrit because even if the erythropoietin is uh, high the bone cell the bone marrow is not responding shabnam b kaisa hoga beta look at the point b hematocrit is okay 50 to 60% what about erythropoietin it is even less than normal the normal erythropoietin given is beta 10 in exercise or in athletes or in marathon runners the erythropoietin is slightly more that means the value should be more than the normal range given to us we've been given the normal erythropoietin level as 10 got this yes red bug has got it correct erythropoietin level ko bhi dekhna hai humko plus humko dekhna hai uh, hematocrit ko dono ko humko dekhna hai hematocrit should be more but the erythropoietin level should also be more it shouldn't be less and if you take a very high erythropoietin level like towards 100 it is reflecting more of a treatment kind of a patient not normal yes shabnam yes tabhi to beta do diya hua hai na tabhi to i told you in the starting look at the x axis epo that is erythropoietin look at the y axis that is hematocrit shabnam whenever you get a graph based question beta not only this anywhere always remember that graph based question mein the first thing to be looked at is the x and y axis always now so boys and girls uh, let me tell you that immediately after this i will be available to you on uh, an academy uh, live open house so if you have to speak to me anything if you have to write to me especially the iconic users you can speak as well if there is any doubt you can type me over here and i right now get to you over the uh open live house right so look into our uh important considerations with an academy and i've already told you that 26th feb we have got our uh, i mean the 26th feb ko the mock test is there right and yes so let's get connected on open house right now